Good morning, and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yori Polani. Um, well, in Africa, I guess it's, it's something of a, an important day, uh, talking the politics of Afri Africa, uh, if not the diplomacy. I'm talking about Zimbabwe and uh, President Robert Mugab Mugabe, now, as my producer puts it, finally uh, resigning. Oh, he's resigned after 37 uh, years, but it, it's not as if he resigned unprompted, as you know. We'll look at that, uh, the, the, the impending change. In fact, the change, you could say, is actually an ongoing thing in Zimbabwe right now. And we'll look at that with Professor Charles Dokubo of the Nigerian Institute of International Affairs. And if you want to be particular, indeed, he's our head of defense strategy. Thanks for coming on, as always, Prof. Oh, thanks for having me. Indeed. Um, to Africa, what does this say to Africa? Uh, what, what would you say? Uh, just taking it from the general and generic. After 37 years, uh, the man that has thumbed his nose up at the West for so long, uh, he's no more going to be part of the picture. Is that, an, is that a, an accurate statement? He's no longer going to be part of the picture in Zimbabwe? Definitely. The fact also remains that in, in Africa, where we have sit tight leaders and all that, I wish they could learn something, but they don't even learn. There's a lesson in there. Uh, there is, but they don't learn. Because, you know, most countries, even with the type of democratization and consolidation of democracy, you still have people are trying to shift goalposts and all that, trying to make things that, uh, you know, as if without them, that country will not rule. And that is what has kept uh, Mugabe all this time. He believed that without him, there will be no Zimbabwe. And he did not believe uh, in, the, in the efficacy of the state itself. He has personalized everything in, in, in Zimbabwe, personalized authority, consolidation of power, everything thrown in one person's hand. So definitely, most African leaders should know that it's a system. And, and then if you push the people to a particular level, mm -hmm. there will be no going where they can go back to, but to come against you. And, and that's, that, that really is a big lesson for Africa. It is. Um, where we, some, it's like it's, we're, we're being told now by these events that um, it's not fashionable anymore. But Prof, let's look at the whole drama. Uh, I lack the word I really need now. The whole drama of m the beginning of the end of Mugabe, the army, uh, first of all, I imagine three men are going to come up, you know, in, for, in, in this conversation. The head of the army, uh, the former vice president, a very, very difficult name till we get used to it, uh, N N Nangagwa, uh -huh. uh, Mr. Nangagwa, and President Mugabe. They were said to be real comrade in arms back in the day when Mugabe was seen as a hero and when he was, you know, in the forest, so to speak. Those three guys... Could you tell us why people are linking the three of them that they go way, 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 way back? And so it became news when there was the fallout between Mugabe and his uh, vice president. The fact is that Mugabe was not just a, a, a political leader. He fought in the trenches. That's it. With the liberation movement. So he has an identity with them. And then even, even to the very end, the way they've treated him, mm -hmm. you can see that there was that bit of respect that he was one of brother in arms and all that. So they were giving him those respect that in other African countries, they wouldn't have given it to any other person <laughs> because he has stayed too long. And then they also realized that in spite of their brotherhood and the trenchhood that they, they shared, yes. they were also, they've come to realize that it was unattainable. It was not tenable anymore. The so way far as Zimbabwe was, was going. Yes. And uh, where he was taking uh, the uh, uh, It was uh, taking them to nowhere. He was just running them in circles. And that they realized that if they don't strike at that time, there'll be no way to bring back uh, Zimbabwe. But my other question is, why is it for how long? When did they see this? People have been talking about that for a long time, that he has lost the, his onions, and yet these are people that kept him there. Which is the more remarkable thing? Because even as um, there was uncertainty about what exactly was going on at the beginning of all of this, the army was emphasizing, perhaps there's a new model here, I hope not. The army was emphasizing that this is not a coup. Uh, President Mugabe is still our commander in chief. Yes. Um, but and and, and that, that, that was, that we haven't heard that before. But you can understand. That's a different style. But you can understand, wouldn't you? Because the fact is that if they've said it's a coup, Article 4H of the AU Constitutive Act forbids, you know, il taking power by force and all that. So they will have found, uh, fall foul of the, of the law. So they were being careful not to treat it as one. So he, he resigned. And he even said voluntarily, 
Yes. So definitely the military was very cautious. They don't want to bring out that C word mm -hmm. that uh, they've taken over school and all the bloodless school or whatever with this because they're also worried about the repercussions. Sadak, what will Sadak do if it's a coup? What will the AU do if it's if it had to be a coup? Indeed. So these were the areas that you are trying to cover. And I think they were well lectured and tutored mm -hmm. about how going about these things. Yes. And they did well. But they've also gone and created, uh, even if I'm the person who is saying so, might not know very much about these matters. They've also gone and created uh, a new template, a template that we haven't seen before. How you can actually have a gentle coup. Um, the whole idea is that no coups at all, totally out of style. Um, you still call it coup. It's not a coup. Indeed, this, the, we, we can't really call this a coup, <laughs> no, right? No, no. Again, it's not a coup. In, in, to, be, to be strictly correct, yes. you cannot call this a coup. No. So, what do we call this? This is a change. It was a change, you know, evolutionary change. The, <laughs> the leader has realized that it does not have any followers anymore. And the, the backbone, the military, the people that he shared a lot of things with, have now turned their back on him. Indeed. And there was no other way but to play this game as well. And this is no doubt, Prof, uh, one of the dangers of a man becoming an institution in himself, because that is what uh, Mugabe became. Well, everybody was deferring to him because of his sacrifices and his patriotism, but uh, some things have an expiry date. It, it got to where Mugabe was hardly co coherent. President Mugabe was hardly coherent anymore. That has been noted for a long time. But then, this type of linkage with the military and that not to, you know, not, uh, not to try to uh, undo the, un un the unravel whatever is taking place was also a very important and telling moment for them. They were careful because in spite of whatever has happened, there's a lot of Zimbabweans that still respect Mugabe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so they are being careful. They, are, they were treading a very careful path that, uh, yes, we want to remove him, but we don't want to disgrace him. Oh. Okay. That's what they were, all these, uh, you know, these uh, movements and all that. It was geared towards there. They are trying, yes, he's going to go. Mm. Because now he realized that we, do, we are not with him again. And yet, we are not going to do it in such a way that it will come and backfire on this movement, this military that he has been part of, this fight for liberation that he has been part of. So that was why they choreographed it in such a way that, yes, it is not a coup. The man is tired, he wants to rest. Okay. That's way. If, even if we are the people speaking for him, yes. uh, that is what His Excellency that's what he's requires. Yes. Yes. So people were being respectful uh, yes. uh, all down the line. Now, uh, Mugabe, throughout his 37 years, particularly in the latter part of it, um, w w just had this penchant for annoying the West, uh, all sorts of ways, under the whole patriotic uh, freedom fighter thing, the whole matter of the white farmers, you know, taking land and all of that, that annoyed the, the, the West, you know, no end. But m my question for you, Prof, is that I've heard it said that um, people like uh, Mr. Nagangwa and Mugabe, uh, there's very little to, some, some are saying so, there's very little to choose between the two of them apart from the, f the age factor. Yes. Uh, what, what would be your comment on that, that uh, how different is Mr. Nanangua going to be? I think what he has learned is that from what has happened to Mugabe, that it could also happen to anybody. Because, you know, they call him the crocodile. And then he's the one that is the tactician. Okay. That with uh, strong hand tactics and all that. <laughs> he's been used to electioneering, very, very political, and also very, very strong person. So far as I'm concerned, I, I don't want to use that word strong man. Yes. Because he could be one of the strong men again. But the fact also remains that Things, these are times for change. You cannot continue to play the old roles again. And he has realized that because the signpost is there for him to see mm -hmm. that this was what happened to Mugabe. And that the next elections to take place next year, yes. if the elections were to be free and fair and free from fear, then definitely the, uh, the Zimbabweans will try and express and vote with their feet to make sure that this is what they really wanted. Indeed. He has a very, for some, his record is not that clean because of his relationship with Mugabe. But for me, there is no other version now that could have a safe pair of hands, that will have the support of the ZANU-PF party, which is the majority mm -hmm. party in that country, 
to steer this, the, the ship of state to, uh, to a nice place. Oh, okay. I, I want to take a caller, but after uh, what I wanted to ask, but I, I have to take the caller now, was whether there's a prospect of any kind of meaningful political reforms in Zimbabwe. But before then, um, uh, Mr. Hassan in Lekki, good morning, sir. Good morning, Mr. Yori. Thank you for calling in. Yeah, good morning, Prof. Thank you. A new era I, in Zimbabwe. I, I received the resignation of uh, Robert Mugabe, President Robert Mugabe of Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. with mixed feelings. Uh, first of all, let me clarify one thing to you and Nigerians. I'm against seat-tight leadership in Nigeria. I believe in people coming to serve, impacted positively, and leave for others to come and contribute their own quota. That's me. Number two, I can see the Western conspiracy. I can see the Western media also conspiracy in keeping silence. And I term that silence as a silence of conspiracy. This was a man that served his country for a long time. He came through struggles. And after that, he now liberated his country from economic colonialism, a country where 70, 80 percent of the land are owned by the whites. And those whites are now subjugating the interests of the indigents of that country. He fought for that and he won it. And since then, he found himself in a black book of the Western developed world and the Western media. Number two, I can see the army chiefs and even the former vice president that these people are also in for self-serving, self-protectionism, and they wanted to remain in power by hook or crook. Yeah, but Mr. Hassan, Mr. M Mr. Hassan, uh, don't you consider that President Mugabe, uh, in the eyes of many, had overstayed his welcome? Yes, no, no doubt about that. No doubt overstay his welcome. You understand? But you see, people should have a clear mindset, should be objective in overthrowing somebody. When he removed the chief of army staff, the man said a coup. And he now brought in, because he knew military dictatorship or military leadership is out of fashion in Africa. Well, okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, interesting. Well, uh, I didn't. I didn't want to disturb his flow, so I didn't quite get what he meant when he said there seems to be a conspiracy of silence uh, 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 by media, Western media especially. The fact is that if they have come out blazing all the way, mm. we'll talk about interference and nuclear interest and all that. The fact is that they left it for the Zimbabweans Indeed. To, decide what, to decide what direction they want to go. And it is not about a conspiracy. Look at the, the, land, the land grab that the West we are so inflamed about. Okay, let me come back on that, Prof, uh, because I've got to go to a break and uh, I'll come back and we'll pick up right from there, the land grab. Stay with us, please. Welcome back, Professor Charles Dokubo of the Institute of International Affairs with us. And we're looking at the, um, the, uh, the ongoing change uh, in Zimbabwe. And before we had to go on break, uh, Prof, you, you, you were going to talk about this whole matter of, um, you know, the, the whole taking the land, uh, the uh, Zimbabwean land back, which didn't go down well with the West. I because it affects, affected mostly white farmers. You are wary about using the word land grab. For me, it was a land grab. If you have the heart of your country in mind, 
if you want the country to prosper, you can also know that this type of creating absentee landlord that does not even know how to farm because you want to fulfill a, 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 a political a, a position, I don't think it will go well for, the, for anybody because what he did was to cut off his nose to spite his face okay. in the sense that these lands, these, uh, they became ab absentee landlords. They were not even farming. A country that was the breadbasket of, 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 of Africa became the basket case itself. So definitely, you can see, that's why people refer to it as, as a land grab, because after all, there was provision for it in the Lancaster House Agreement, and that the British government was also ready to fund this idea of land exchange and all that. They are ready to change. But you know, it's only when Mugabe is in political problems, that's when he brings up issues that are so divisive, mm -hmm. like the land grab. Mm -hmm. And then you, you, you can, he can wrap himself on the nationalist flag and all that. And, but if you think of your country, the way forward for your country, how you can provide social provision for those in the country that have nothing to do. If you start depoliticize everything and try to make sure that people live a particular level, you know, standard of life and all that, the land grab wouldn't have been an issue. There are other countries in Southern Africa where you have this land issue, but the way they've done, gone about it, I think, is to bring peace to their own country sure. and to make sure that they don't fall the same way the Zimbabwean issue you know, was treated. Okay. Uh, Mr. George, good morning, and thank you for calling in. Good morning, Uncle Jerry. Good morning, sir. Well, uh, good morning to the prof as well. Good morning. Uncle Yare, you, you, you spoke about um, liberation struggle by uh, Mugabe. You see, what a man does is not what counts. What counts is what lies behind what a man does. The liberation struggle and the, uh, after about five, ten years, it became clear that Mugabe was actually not struggling for the people, but for himself. You saw how he began to uh, create way for a Mugabe dynasty in Zimbabwe. He became so old that he thinks that his wife should take over. You can't compare that with the liberation struggle of Mandela. When Mandela, after spending 27 years in prison, he came out and he was made the president. He took uh, only one term. They asked him to continue. He said no. He has done the legacy. He wanted to make sure that the, 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 there is a change. Apartheid is eliminated. He achieved that one and passed some power to others. That is the way you should know that somebody doesn't have a selfish idea about the struggle. If I were the new or the incoming president of Zimbabwe, I would probe Mugabe. There is a questionable $50 billion loan which the people have been saying they do not know what it was paying for. Before he goes to be enjoying the money with his wife somewhere, they should probe him and recover whatever they can recover from that money. That's my view. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. George, for calling in. And that goes to uh, the, the point Mr. George just made that, look, Mugabe, uh, President Mugabe's uh, you know, tenure needs to be investigated, to be probed. Um, arguably, that was uppermost on his own mind, is my conjecture, when he now decided that, you know what, his wife, you know, uh, President Mugabe's wife, uh, should be, uh, should, should follow after him. Uh, but if, this is where I said that perhaps his thinking, the senility had, begin to, had begun to come into it maybe a little bit. How could he think he could get away with that is part of the problem we have on our hands? Because, you know, the way he handled the ZANU-PF party, <laughs> he was the soul and heart of the party. And everybody and whoever that is anybody in that party also, they were ready to listen to Mugabe. When even you know, his opponents win, uh, will win elections, they'll go against the opponent. That's to show you how, how he held the country. He was, he was the country itself. Mm. He, he's the institution itself. He's a strong man there. There are no strong institutions in, 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 in Zimbabwe. And that was why you have, he personalized his authority and everything. So whatever he was doing, they were not even questioning. Even you have better heads yes. to r rule the country. But where you come from also means a lot. If you are not from the tribe that he comes from and you are coming from Matabele land, mm -hmm. if you remember what he did with the North Korean troops in Matabele land during the liberation struggles and all that, you can see that those people, when even they are better placed 
to be in charge of things because they were from a minority group. Mm. There will be no chance for them. It is a, a food for thought for most African countries. Indeed, and I'm going to come back to the point of, uh, Prof, um, of possible political uh, reform in Zimbabwe and the ethnic factor. I, I know you have uh, one or two comments on that, but in the meantime, let me go to uh, Sadiq. Uh, Sadiq is calling in from uh, Jigawa. Good morning, sir. Okay, good morning. Good morning, sir. Thank you for calling in. And uh, good morning to the Prof. Yeah. Good morning. Okay, I saw the Zimbabweans yesterday celebrating. And I, th I think my prayer is it should not go the same way it went in uh, Libya, Iraq, and the rest. Because this is a purely Western conspiracy. Because what they are saying is Mugabe has overstayed in uh, Zimbabwe. Then what do we say of uh, Paul, uh, Paul Bia of Cameroon? So it's simply because uh, Mugabe has been on the nose of the Western world. He doesn't deal with them. And that's why they are striking back at him. The last U, uh, UN meeting they did, what he said was one of the things he said, Mr. Trump, blow your Trump to yourself, not to us. <laughs> so they are seeing him as a great threat. Yes, but world. yes, but Mr. Sadiq, I, I hear what you've just said about, but the conspiracy part, uh, do you yourself not consider that he might possibly have overstayed his welcome? To some certain extent, he has not. Because as far as I'm concerned, Mugabe is one of the one of those that if we have in Africa, the so-called United States of Africa we want to have we will definitely get it. But with him in the picture, the Western world will think if he's in the picture, then it will, the Africans will be a great challenge to them. Uh, Africa is going to be a great challenge to them. That's why they outfed him. And uh, well, I pray it doesn't get to the extent of Libya and uh, Iraq. That's my Thank you very much, uh, Sadiq. Appreciate your contribution. Prof, what chance do you think there is for uh, meaningful political reform? We, we often hear it. We hear it here at home in relation to our affairs. But over there, what, what chance is there of political uh, reform, do you think, such that uh, Mr. Nanangwa will not become another Mugabe? You uh, just spoke about how M Mugabe became a one-man institution. Yes. The fact is that you know, they've seen the signposts there the signs on the wall, you cannot rule a people like that forever. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, this change in, in Zimbabwe will be a very good signpost and, it also, and also a reminder for him that has been in the corridors of power and inside, it, within power itself, not only on the corridor, that, must, that, that there's a better way of ruling Zimbabwe. Okay. And that a country where everybody could have a share of it, a country where every citizen will be seen as equal, a country where there will be no second class citizen, a country where, which was very wealthy mm -hmm. in terms of African standards, mm. now is a, bread, is, a, is a basket case. <laughs> For me, those who talk about Western conspiracies and all that, I look at them and shudder at times. This was an internal problem. He could be a thorn in the flesh of the West. That's good. But that if you cannot take care of your own domestic, you know, you've talked about a, a, a responsibility to protect. Nations are in charge of controlling their, 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 their countries. And when that country becomes a failed state, then the international community will intervene. In this case, it was the nation that stood up and said that we, we've got, we had eno enough of it. Okay. And for them, Christmas has not come sooner. <laughs> Mr. Onugu is calling in from uh, 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 Lokoja. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Thank you for calling in. You are welcome. My regard to, to the prof with you there. He can hear you right away. <laughs> let me, let me uh, align myself with the last caller, Mr. Sodik. Oh, okay, the conspiracy theory. Yes, I align myself with his opinion about uh, Mugabe. You see, those who are saying, uh, talk about the tight syndrome, align it with Mugabe, are the people who really doesn't understand the foundation of Zimbabwe as a country. Mugabe has been at the forefront right from when he was a little boy. And his war on liberation of the African people caught across not only in Zimbabwe, he went to Mozambique and fought for their own independence too. So if you look at what Mugabe has gone through and how he has been able to handle, to harmonize the people of Zimbabwe together to this moment, I think we should give him a kind of respect. And that is what the military has shown to him. 
those who really understand the formation of the country called Zimbabwe. You understand? Okay. So I, I, I do, I do. Let us, you know, so a, a caller just said that uh, he should be pro, he should be done. Just like Sudik said, if we should have three Mugabe's in Africa during his time, we should have advanced this place. And read yesterday how British are ready to, you know, uh, commit some funds to a kind of, uh, you know, to the uh, Zimbabwean economy and revive it because Mugabe has gone. It was Mugabe who even took the land that they were forcefully colonized, forcefully taken from the people of the Zimbabwe back to the people. Mm. Okay, so, thank you. And again, we should be mindful of the fact that what happened in Libya, in Egypt, and other Africa should yeah. not repeat itself in Zimbabwe. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Nugu. Uh, I got to interrupt you. Really appreciate your call, but I got to go to a break. Stay with us, please. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. I'm still looking at the change uh, ongoing in uh, Zimbabwe. President Mugabe is making way in all probability or likelihood uh, uh, Mr. Nanangwa will be uh, taking over. But we, I think I've been surprised. People who have called in talking about the conspiracy theory, uh, looking at what has happened to Zimbabwe, it just shows how much you know one knows in the sense that you've got to hear it from other people too and what are their perspectives. Um, there's still the ethnic issue, uh, the part that would play in any sort of meaningful attempt at political reform in Zimbabwe. We'll get the prop to react on that. But let's just look at Mr. Mugabe's resignation uh, speech. The Congress is due In a few weeks from now, I will preside over its processes which must not be prepossessed by any acts calculated to undermine it or to compromise the outcomes in the eyes of the public. However, we cannot be guided by bitterness or vengefulness, both of which would not make would not make us any better party members or any better Zimbabweans. The co um okay um didn't get as much as i would have liked but um it almost sounded as if he was saying can we hear can we just all get along can we forgive and forget and get along it sounded a bit like that which would suggest to me a bit of how much out of it he had become in fact uh, he doesn't as if he, he speaks as if he doesn't understand the enormity of the situation in which the country is people were expecting him to resign that was not a, res a resignation speech. He was talking about holding party conferences yes. and himself chairing the occasions and all that. So you can see how way out, you know, it could be in Cloud Cuckoo Land or anything. <laughs> so that's how it is. And that those who talk about conspiracies. Yeah, I'm surprised about it's really, that. I'm really surprised. This man ruled this country for 37 years. There was no foreign intervention. There was no, and then they compare it to Libya. Libya was part of an uprising. 
than w in which most Western, uh, w most uh, mi Middle Eastern countries uh, partook. It was not the West. It was not the West that started it. The fact was that the West supported it because they thought that it was going to be a democratic change that would take place. They must understand that it was the Libyans that killed Gaddafi. The West did not kill him. Okay, so there's that point that people should they note should when know they want that to There is no conspiracy comparison. whatsoever. The country has failed. This is a collapsed state. Mm -hmm. Look at the rate of inflation. Well, yeah. Unemployed rate. It's not the whites that are taking the job away from him or from the country. This is a country that he has ruled to the ground. Okay. Uh, Mazi Okorafo, you want to weigh in on the subject? Good morning, sir. Yeah, good morning, sir. Good morning, Professor Dukubo. Good morning, Prof. Good morning. Yeah, you see, Mugabe tried, but his wife, Chris, compounded Mugabe's saga. The, you saw what, what the wife did when, the, when they visited, uh, went to visit South Africa. I think without one alone, <laughs> now look at the latest report now in, uh, in, in Zimbabwe. That the Minister of Finance in Zimbabwe, that the money in his house is higher than the money in the Zimbabwe Central Bank. Now, you ask yourself, in Africa, what we have is seat type uh, leaders and change of goalpost. But he tried his best between the group. But, the but okay, let's thank the military of that very country. But what they did was that was a very soft landing. Because by, by, the, by, the, by the system, it was a very, very soft landing. They have tried. But the question now is this I know people say they should prove it. Whether they prove or they don't. Now you ask yourself, uh, Prof. Sayuri. Uh, uh, such amount in the Minister of Finance house in Zimbabwe. What is the minister to who gave him such amount of money to keep in his house? Cash. These are dollars. Now, Africa is a country that when people sit enter the leader in the doctor, he just turn the country into his own personal business, wife, friends, and uh, 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 name them. Is this how we're supposed to do? The Africa is supposed to move ahead. I agree that Mugabe brought the president to the country. Yes, that is hundred percent. I agree that Mugabe agreed. The white men wanted to turn the country to the, 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 the way they did Nigeria colonize the colonial everything, turn Nigeria upside down, this and then we still come back to Africa. Thank God we are there. We have we seen our the level now under this democratic system of government. But the thing is this Mugabe tried, but the thing is that Mugabe could have left the office in a very soft and sound manner. That could have given a very big report. This is coming to be very, very stubborn because of the white. It's not the best. Thank you. Our African leaders, they should learn the lesson from Zimbabwe. Mm. Thank you very much. Have a great day in Lagos. Indeed. Uh, thank you very much. Um, so, President Mugabe, at the end of the day, had uh, women troubles. But uh, uh, now that Mr. Now that uh, we're going to have a new president in Zimbabwe, uh, Nanangwa, um, I, I want he he's not to be envied. The way I look at it. The, the, the work... What he has is a poison challenge. That, that's, what, that's what he has. The, thank you. Because, you know, whatever he does, he has to be very careful in the sense that, you know, bearing in mind where he was coming from and then the position he has just uh, taken over. He has been complicit in all what Mugabe did. So definitely people are wary about him. It's not that they are waiting for him with an open hand to come in and rule them. Because there'll there be are those lot, who are going as far as calling him a be, clone a of, of Mugabe. There will be a lot of questions and all that. But to move on, I think time will come when next year when the elections take place. Yeah. If the elections do take place, definitely. And if the elections are free and fair and people will allowed to vote the way they want, mm -hmm. then you can, see that, you can see that they've moved on. But if it's going to be the way he managed the elections of of Mugabe, in which people were frightened, in where the elections were not free and fair, and free from fear, then definitely it will be just the same game for the Zimbabwean people. And I pity them if it takes that turn. Well, there's someone else on the line. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Thank good you. Morning. Please, uh, Femi, please go ahead. Uh -huh. Good morning, I am You are forgotten my fact that I gave you, that you should bring our ministers to come and tell us what they are doing in their ministry. Now, let me go into this issue. They, I congratulate the Zimbabweans for what they have done. And I also, I'm so happy that they have been able to extricate themselves from this permanent rule. But they still have a lot of things to do. One, there should be the political landscape to be expanded and made to be very good. 
that the people will have a choice. They, where, the choice of the people will reflect in their election. Mm. Number two, during this transition period, they should put in place something that a way to curb corruption in their country. If they can do these two things, within a very short period, they will get out of the problem they are having. Just, this man they put just, there. Just like us in Nigeria, right? Yeah. We have only two people in the world, the good and the bad. It is not Yoruba, it is not Alsa, it is not Swahili. That is what we have not realized. But at the same time, we cannot, in African continent, we have that issue. But that issue will be, if we minimize in the future, if things start going very well, that we will not be looking at tribe or anything. That tribe issue is affecting most of the politics in Africa. Mm. Mm. So, but it cannot be uh, it cannot be done in a day. But at the same time, they should allow the choice of the people to be reflected in their election. Okay. If they can do that one, try to put in place structures for to combat corruption, things will be all right. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you very much for calling in. And um, if I if my example is anything to go by, we know what a bumpy road that is. But Prof, the sort of twin question that I want to ask is that. Considering all the respect that people are in Zimbabwe, that people are giving to President uh, Mugabe, um, uh, Mr. George said that he thinks he should be probed. You know, that, that's the first thing, because the Zimbabwean Commonwealth should be accounted for. That's on the one hand. I, want, uh, I, I go back to this whole question of uh, political reform in Zimbabwe. Vis-a-vis uh, -vis the ethnic uh, uh, distribution, Mugabe is from the largest uh, tribe, I believe. Yes, yes. Uh, but he's been beaten before. Yes. Could you just sort of explain how we can... Uh, he was beaten before, but it never showed. It they never, never showed. allowed it, it to did, show. It, it didn't allow it to even... It, 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 it didn't come out. You know, they have to cop the way of trying to make somebody a prime minister where the constitution <laughs> does not have a, a prime ministerial position. Exactly. So definitely they did that. But I believe, like I said, this man, the president, the man who is coming over to take over the, the, the headship of the ship will know that they've tried all those things and then it didn't take them anywhere. I strongly believe, I strongly believe that uh, he, he, he must have gotten a safe pair of hands, and I believe he would know the shortfalls and where, wherever the problem that Mugabe had, he's not going to fall into those traps again. Could a minority, somebody from a minority region, so to speak, or tribe, uh, ever hope to make it in Zimbabwe? I it mean, depends on the, uh, the, the, uh, the political system they're adopting. If it is first past the post system, okay. where you know at once you have one over the other person you've won, then it. But if you can have in, it in such a way, where you have share, sharing, share, sharing in terms of proportional representation, where you have a different system of votes, so the number of votes you get a, after a, a particular percentage, you have representation in the house. So no party will form the major party, so that before a decision will be taken, then you have to listen to everybody. Okay. that forms part of that government. Okay. If that sort of a thing is possible, even in Nigeria, some people have called for that sort of professional representation so that, you know, every region, wherever you come from, if you attain a particular level of, uh, if you've got a particular level of vote, then definitely you have representation in the House. Okay. That will create an open mm. area that uh, people can voice their opinion and all that. And then you cannot, because you are from a majority tribe, take a decision mm -hmm. that, Orders, you that must, doesn't involve you must, all the others. You must get orders to agree with you before you take a particular position. Okay. Olani, why are you in the UK? Thank you very much for holding on. Go ahead now, sir. Hello, uh, Mr. Yori and Professor. I'm really, really a bit angry with you, right? Because you put me on hold for almost five minutes. Oh, I'm so sorry about that. You know how it yeah, is. Okay. You know, um, firstly, what are we say about Mugabe? Yeah, he's a true leader. He's a freedom fighter, but he overstayed his boundary. The man is old. If you look at him, when he was talking, it's like there's no more things in his head. His people around him that are just holding on, the, on to the power. It's not him anymore. So he could have just go, maybe that last year or after the, before the last election, and he will have his honor like um, um, Mandela. But now, 
I think it's already loose, you know, the, 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 the love of the country. The money that they are talking about, people are dying. I met some of the Zimbabwe people, that, some of them, they are my friend over in the UK. I met the white Zimbabwe um, people. You know, he was telling me about their um, experience in Zimbabwe. He said he left with only five suitcases. Yes. The, the, the white family, he said there are about eight of them. They couldn't take anything because they came to come and kill them. So those people, they are in pain. It's like we, that we stay in the UK. Let the British say all the black people should go away. And we have we even hold the British passport. How, how we feel? We, we won't feel for even our children that was born here. So what um, uh, this guy did is very bad. The money he took, they should go be, um, after him, get those money. Then my advice to the um, vice president that I was thinking in the power now is by next year, he's already old, let him step down. And from now let them come in, the party and him, start coming the young one they want to be in the power. So things will be okay. Don't let him come up as a president next year. In here. He's old. Ah, okay. Because if you do that, yeah, if you do that, you see the same thing as Mukade. Mm. Okay, interesting. Um, well, if you're not a Mandela, uh, being content with just one term or whatever, uh, I don't know, it, it remains to be seen that uh, there are many Mandelas in Africa. It depends also on the political system. Is it five-term president and that can you stay there forever if you have been winning elections? Mm -hmm. And if the elections are free and not manipulated and that you keep yourself by using uh, whatever means to keep yourself in power. But if it is open elections, if there's a level playing uh, whatever means to keep yourself in power. But if it is open elections, if there's a level playing field for everybody, and then you continue to win elections, no person will stop you. And that for them to, sign, to pick him up because he has worked with Mugabe, mm -hmm. then he shouldn't be president again. Let the people of Mo Mo um, Zimbabwe decide that. We don't have to pontificate for them. Which is the point you made in relation to the uh, conspiracy theories, yes. uh, you know, uh, perpetrators that, um, look, rather than, because it's been said that there was a, I think one of our callers said that he sees something of a conspiracy of silence. And as you pointed out, no, on the contrary, they were being careful not to be seen to be interfering. interfering and yes. let this, because I think any way you look at it, this is seen as a Zimbabwe affair. Sure. Uh, because the, the, the things that came out of, of this particular incident, we haven't heard before that it's not a coup. Uh, the man, the president is still our commander in chief. And uh, we, we, I think it was even said that he wasn't even under house arrest. In short, reverence, the greatest respect was being given to him. Um, but people like Joshua, you see, you were saying off camera that, look, growing up, it was people like Joshua and Como, they were other mm -hmm. uh, freedom fighters. Yes. Uh, but all of those have disappeared now. Yes, we looked about the internal arrangement. She told uh, she told you, Reverend Shitolu, and then the other oh, bishop, what, 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 Mozerewa. Uh, Mozerewa, Mozerewa and Dagamindi. These were also, you have internal, internal arrangement before, mm. or before uh, uh, Robert Mugabe. But as he, as he came to the uh, top of it, all these people were you know, carted away. You must also understand that in the liberation movement, where you take side with external actors, at the end, when they leave, you will be found wanting. That was what happened to Mozerewa, Sitolu, and all that. The fact is that Mugabe has been ruling that country, and there is no white interference. I thought that even Moza, Mo, Mo, uh, Zimbabwe could be a country where you still have white parliamentarians who can win elections mm. and be part of the system. Mm. But it wasn't. At once there is any pressure on Moza, uh, Mugabe, he will use something to, to, to win the support of the majority of the people in the country. Okay, Mohammed in Damaturu, good morning. Uh, Mohammed. Okay, go ahead right now, please. Hello? Mohammed, we're waiting for you. Good morning. Good morning, man. Good morning. Barely. Uh, I, I, do you have your phone on speakerphone or something? Speak into the phone. Speak into the phone. Hello? Yes, hello. Continue, please. Can, can, can you hear me? Yes, we can. We, we can. Uh, my take on uh, what is in this country is that... Hello, hello? 
Hello? We can hear you, Mohammed. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Don't worry about that. Mohammed? Um, Mohammed is gone. Uh, the, 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 even Mohammed's voice was sounding a bit off mic, is why I was asking, were you on speakerphone or something? Um, I don't know. See, well, see if you can get in again to, uh, to get the matter out. I, I, I watch commentary all over the world, cable TV, and um, people were just reporting it as it was coming out of Zimbabwe. It was happening. As it was happening. There was no manipulation. Uh -uh. There was no fake news. There was no alternative news. There was no, everything was just coming out live from Zimbabwe. These were people that have been oppressed, repressed, marginalized, and, and stigmatized to poverty and all that. So for them, it was a second independence. Independence not from the whites anymore, but independence from a leader that has, that has ruled that country. None, most of them have not seen any leader apart from him. Okay. Okay. Uh, just before we close, since we had the, you know, not the right picture of Mugabe the last time, uh, let, let, let's, let's, let's see if we got it better now. Gabriel Mugabe, in terms of section 96, subsection 1, of the Constitution of Zimbabwe, hereby formally tender my resignation as the President of the Republic of Zimbabwe with immediate effect. I, Robert. Well, well, there, again, just when we needed the most important sentence, yes. I, Robert Mugabe, it, yes. they took it away again. Mm -hmm. But all of this, we we're just trying to add a bit more flesh to the bone. But it's, it's a done deal. He, 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 he's out. He's out, yes. And uh, today, I think the whole procedure about how they now install Mr. Nanangwa yes. uh, will, will be in place. Uh, we, we, we have to keep an eye on them because, um, uh, on Zimbabwe, I mean, because how he's going to rebuild, reconstruct the economy, uh, re 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 reconstruct civil life, uh, make, 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 make Zimbabwe the, the country for all Zimbabweans, uh, no matter where you come from, I guess that's going to be the most important thing. That's uh, the most important thing. I don't, I, I want, I, I've seen it as, as, you know, as a collapse state. And now to rebuild institutions that have been torn asunder and all that, to set up other things like infrastructural development and all that. Look at the, uh, the, count, uh, the, the, the counters in the, in the shops and all that. How do you make provisions for these people? For them. Because the shops are empty. For them, you know, social provision is the most important thing now. How do they take care of the families? Mm. How can you alleviate poverty and poverty reduction policies and all that? Where will they have the support from the international community to, to assist? In well, this everybody is now saying that they want to assist now that um, one of their problems is out of the way. So hopefully the new guy will be able to <laughs> consolidate on that. It is not even one of their problems. The fact is that even Mugabe at that time wouldn't have accepted anything from anywhere, believing that there will be a string, a string attached to it. But be that as it may, he has fought a, a battle, he has won a, a, a democracy for his people, but also he has turned them into, into, into a poverty-stricken uh, country where people don't have anything to eat. We must understand that there is always a time for people to give away when the ovation is loudest. Until we learn that, learn about that and imbibe it, mm -hmm. it will be difficult. In those days, Nigerians would say it can never happen in Nigeria yeah. during the Abacha period. They say it can never happen in Nigeria. Then we have five political parties nominating Abacha. We have seen, all, we've seen everything here. So don't say never. Indeed. Well, uh, Professor Charles Dokubo, thank you very much for coming along and giving us your insight uh, uh, on, on all that's going on in Zimbabwe. It's, it's an ongoing story. And so uh, we're going to keep an eye on it. But thank you very much, Professor Charles Dokubo, Head of uh, Defense and Strategy, Nigerian Institute of International Affairs. Uh, and that's our program today. Uh, join us tomorrow, please, for a fresh edition. I'm Yori Folari. Um, as a more fact, uh, tomorrow, uh, Jones Usen uh, will be right here. Uh, I'll see you the day after.